Greetings, Earthlings. This is a PDP-11 chassis, power supply, back plane. There's no cards in it at this time. Uh, but I'm going to try and build up a system. Now, it says PDP-11 23+, because that's what it used to be. But I have in mind something better. I have a, an 8190 processor board, which is a PDP-1173, and I have, but wait, there's more. This is a one megabyte or 512k word, uh, you can see it's half populated, uh, PMI memory board, PMI memory, woo, that's cool. That makes it almost a PDP-1183. Um, now this requires a certain type of backplane, PDP-11 backplane. It's got to have the Q, let's see, 22-bit, Q, call it Q22CD, okay? And uh, what that means is, you see, there's, there's two sets of, of uh, edge connectors here. And one of those is AB and the other is CD. On some back planes, uh, both halves, there's, 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 there's four, uh, you know, sockets that you can plug in. Actually, it's two dual sockets, but um, both sides are, are Q-Bus. On some, which includes this one, this one being a nine, H9276, uh, there's a Q-Bus on the one side and what they call CD on the other side, because this is A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's just CD. Uh, it's a private, private bus. And so this communicates with the uh, memory over that private bus, which is faster than going over the Q bus. However, the PMI memory also does support Q bus, this, this uh, particular one I have. Um, I don't think all of them do, but... Um, uh, so other devices, like a, if you have a DMA device, that can still access that memory, but it's going over the Q-Bus, which is, again, a little slower. Uh, so this should be a real screamer. Uh, I also have, uh, let's see, uh, throw in there, a uh, parallel printer interface and another, uh, serial card this has the, the, the processor has one serial port on it so that'll be the console port but then i have a second serial port if i need it uh i don't currently have a disk drive or a disk controller scuzzy controller or a, or, or 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 whatever so uh that's something i'm gonna have to get at some point but first we gotta sort of see if it's even close to working if we can uh, power it up, get into the debugger that's built into the processor. Okay, so that tells us the power supply is working, the processor is working, the memory is working, you know. Uh, that's the first step, and that's what we're going to try now. So, I have it plugged in. I have it hooked up to um, a, uh, an active load which is that box back there. And uh, let's see, this can this power supply can supply, I think, about 30 amps. That's rated to 150 watts, but uh, only 15 amps. So um, we're going to try maybe crank it up to 10 amps, see if, see if this thing holds 5 volts. I should also check the 12 volts, actually. But... Uh, um, because it's dual 5 and 12 volt supply. But first, let's start with the 5 volts. Okay, so it's plugged in. That's hooked up. The meter here is hooked up. I'm going to turn this on, and it's going to get noisy. Okay, 
and I'm going to power it on and it's going to get noisier because this has fans in it as well. But hopefully we'll see, and that's turn, that's turn, just turn it way down. I'll turn it all the way down to start, okay? And we'll see this light, power okay, there's a light here. So we'll see if that light comes on. Okay, we've got 5.059 volts, but power's not okay because it's not drawing any current. There's about an amp. That light now came on, as you can see. Uh, it's at 5.03 volts, so that's still good. Let's take it up to 5 amps ish. There's 5 amps, 4.983 volts, that's still pretty good. That's still pretty good. Okay, let's go to 10 amps. Ten amps, four point nine two four. Okay, that's still that's still quite good. Uh, uh, that seems to be working. Uh, I think the thing to do now is to plug in some cards, get a terminal hooked up, and see if it fires up. It's kind of a scary thing. So I might let the smoke out, you know. All right, let's talk configuration here. This is uh, quite messy, but. Um, <laughs> We'll get through it. Um, so with PMI, but normally uh, a PDP-11 processor would go in the first slot of the backplane. With PMI memory, the memory goes in the first slot, or the first two, if you happen to have two PMI cards. Um, and then the processor goes in the next slot. So here's the memory. And then these switches here, which you may not be able to see because of the camera angle in this bar, uh, set to uh, location zero, and this is uh, the other thing. What is it? CSR register? That's also set to default of zero. Okay. On the processor, uh, I've set it for 9600 baud, and I have switch five off, which says it should enter dialog mode on power up. Okay. There's a serial port here. This is the console serial port. Now, what is this? I'm using as a terminal a VT100 emulator, which is here. Uh, that's from uh, Legacy Pixels. And I have my own, um, I made my own cable because I'm going nine pin to nine pin. Uh, and then it goes through a 9 pin null modem cable. If you go if you're going to 25 pin Then uh, you can get a glitch works uh, Cable and I have one of those as well, but in this case since the uh, terminal is 9 pin um, I use my homemade one Okay, so this installs In slot 2 here Okay so that's it. Oh, here's the other thing. Um, M8637DF, okay. And that's the half populated board. I can, I have the chips to upgrade that to, uh, to two gigabytes, uh, megabytes, <laughs> gigabytes, two megabytes if I, uh, if, it, if it works and if I, if I get around to it. Uh, the other thing, here's the processor, M8190AB. Uh, that's good because that means, I don't know, you probably didn't notice, uh, it does not have the floating point processor accelerator chip. Uh, it, it, the, all of the 8190s have floating point implemented in microcode, but you can get a floating point accelerator chip, FPP, floating point processor or whatever, that plugs in there. The A, B card will accept it. The The earlier ones, which I think have no letters or it's AA, um, can't. Uh, so, not necessary, but, uh, you know, something, if, if I, for some reason, wanted to do a lot of heavy floating point arithmetic, it's something I could look to add down the line. Okay. So, 
we believe the power supply is good. We've got the terminal hooked up. We've got enough uh, working here that it ought to power on and do something. Oh, look at that. It went into ODT. Okay. Okay, I had the uh, um, halt switch on. So now when I reset, it comes up, uh, runs its self-test, and it says clock error. Oh. Do I have the clock not on? Let's see. Reboot. Testing in progress. Okay, there we go. Message before entering dialog mode. Look at that. Okay. Uh, which one do I want? Map. Okay, we've got our RAM. PMI RAM. That's good. That's good. Uh, not gonna boot. What is list? <laughs> These are my available boot devices. I don't have any of them, obviously, so we ain't going to be booting off those. Uh, but yeah, basically we have a working system. So, what that means, what I'm going to do the most important thing here we go the most important thing is proper labeling it's no longer a 23 plus it's a 73 plus and in this case the plus being the uh, PMI memory 